Hello, thank you for tuning in to the Casually Molly podcast. This is your host, Molly Amberkey. Just wanted to remind you that we are in partnership with With Love. With Love is a handcrafted bath and body company based in St. Louis, Missouri. Founded by hubby and wife dynamic duo Stephen and Kendra Hunt in November 2016, they initially wanted to make natural products for their family to use, but God had a bigger plan. Commercial products and the uncertainty of everything that was in the household. They decided to formulate their own products with items right in the kitchen. They made a post on social media about the products they were making, and the community started to inquire. Here they are today. Just remember that you can follow With Love on Facebook and Instagram. Have you ever wanted to get your shit together? Scrap it, look through the lens and capture it. But first world problems are getting you down. Disabled, salty, need a lap to fix that frown. <laughs> well, you can do all those things and so much more. Just grab a seat in the chair with the floor. Sit back, relax, recline. While she drops another casual line. You're tuned in to Casually Molly. With Molly and Bergie. All right, welcome back to the Casually Molly podcast. This is your host, Molly Ambergie, coming at you live from St. Peter's, Missouri. Yay! <laughs> uh, I am with uh, one of my favorite people, Michael Tobin. How are you today? I am fantastic, Molly. How are you doing? I'm good. Uh, thank you for joining me here on the podcast. It's so good to see you. How are you surviving quarantine? I think is the big question. <laughs> uh, I am. Um, I'm one of those social people where I like to physically touch people uh, in, a, in an appropriate way. Um, sure. <laughs> unless I drink a lot and then that's a whole different story. But anyway, uh, yeah, I miss that. And it's kind of funny. There's a few of my friends that we were talking uh, online and about that it's like oh i can't wait to hug you you know it's it's that thing and what's funny is uh katie that you know that works at the club is polar opposite and she's loving this life even though she's got a she works uh, at a hotel and then she's also an occupational therapist so she has to go out um but uh she's really loving uh when she's at home and can just hang out in her room and do whatever she does. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's a, you know, I'm quarantined with my boyfriend, Jimmy Day, and Jimmy and I are both comedians, but we both have very different styles when it comes to being extroverts and introverts. And I like love socializing, being with people. I'm like moping around the house because I work at a hotel too. And being at the hotel, it's essential work, but you don't obviously with the uh, current events happening. Not many people are traveling. Not a lot of people are staying at hotels. So I'm not talking to a lot of people unless they're on the phone. Um, but it's it's hard because like Jimmy's like, yeah, I'm getting so much done and I don't really have to see a lot of people. It's great. And I'm just like, I, it'll be, I'll be so happy and I'll be like, oh, I'm doing this podcast. It'll be great. And then like the moment we're done recording this, I'll be like, oh my God, I'm not going to see people for a while. And it's just, I don't know. I, I, it's a it's a weird contrast. It goes in waves, I feel like. But um, I am looking forward to getting back to, uh, for those of you who don't know, Michael is the founder of Backdoor Comedy and Events in O'Fallon, Missouri. Uh, he's given me some great opportunities. I hosted for Stephen Briggs. So thank you for the stage time. And, you know, now I got to be friendly with Stephen and Steph Bright, who was the feature. So uh, shout yes. out to them. Uh, Michael, you have quite a resume though. You know, you've been an entrepreneur for 27 years and, you know, that shows that you definitely have the insight to be able to start a company and start something new. Um, and we definitely live in a world, especially now that everything's virtual like this is where a lot of people are self-starters, there's pop-ups, you know, there's so much. Let's talk about from the beginning, what made you want to go into something like entrepreneurship? Because um, I know this isn't your first venture. So what's your background? What do you do that makes you want to do this, I guess? <laughs> what do I, I know, right? what is the voodoo that I do? Uh, you know, being an entrepreneur, uh, and it, I, I truly believe it's because my father was an entrepreneur and he was a home builder. And I grew up in that um, mindset of, if you want to do something, you should just go out and do it. And 
figure it out. Uh, it's, and so um, when, you know, people I talk to that feel really stuck in their job and, you know, they work like a regular nine to five. And I'm like, whoa, what's, what's your passion? You know, is there something you ever want to do? And they're like, oh, yeah, and they tell me about it. And I'm like, well, go do it. And they're like, oh, I can't do that. And I'm like, yeah, you can. You know, and so, um, yeah, I've always, you know, from to answer your question, my parents um, uh, were entrepreneurs, and I just kind of took that to heart. And um, whenever I get an idea, I kind of, you know, in the, in the early years, I just kind of jumped in and did it because I didn't have many responsibilities. As I get older, uh, I still jump into it. But I have a lot of responsibilities. But I do think out uh, the um, the whole uh, business plan in my head before I even do anything. Uh, and that's you know this last venture that I'm doing now is with the comedy club. It's something I've actually thought of for over a decade, um, just kind of sitting in the back and then just waiting for opportunity. Um, and that's uh, you know I jumped on it and. Here we are. Well, you've been doing great. Uh, for to give you a background, how Michael and I met, you. What I loved about you, Michael, is that you know you were going out. You weren't just like I'm going to open up a club. Here's only my ideas. You've been merging with other comedians. You've been helping comedians like me kind of find their way through their ventures. And you went and supported other clubs while you were you know looking for your own. And that's right. how we met was, yeah, you came to the Funny Bone one night and he stayed the whole time. I was number 17. So, you know, eventually sometimes at open mics, like people start leaving and going. And Michael was so great. He saw, was like, Jimmy and I were in the parking lot and my friend Bridget who came and he was like, hi, I'm Michael. And like, here's my card. I'm opening up a club. And I was like, wow, you know, that is, that is such a venture for, you know, you are a father, you're a husband. You know, it's like, oh, you know, I'm taking on like this next chapter chapter of my life per se with this club. And uh, it's been great because you've been growing. For those of you who don't know, Michael does an open mic on Thursday nights. And there was one night that I was on the list and it was only standing room only because <laughs> everybody was there and, you know, the tap house was serving food and it, it was kind of a cool experience. What, what I'll ask you is how has the uh, reaction been to St. Charles County for you bringing a comedy club to that side of the uh, city? <laughs> it's been fantastic, you know, and that was one of the things I was so excited because it, uh, being that I grew up in St. Charles County, grew up out of Lake St. Louis and presently live in St. Peter's, not too far from Jimmy. Um, yeah. And uh, um, I've always, you know, I look at the county as a whole and being a, a part of the community, I wanted to have this entertainment uh, venue. and right now we didn't have anything um you know sure there's lots of bars and they play music and that's awesome but people you know i i knew one and more and uh and i kept on asking people i go what what do you what would you think if we had a comedy club and they're like oh that would be so great yeah i would support that and so you know that was another part of my research along like going to and checking out comics you know, around um st louis area uh, you know, it's something, if you're doing, wanting to do a business, you should do your research. You know, it's all not about, uh, what's on paper and the numbers and, you know, all the, the things that if you go, you know, to business school and you get your, you know, business degree, they, they do the analytical stuff. Uh, I, I would like to do what I find, uh, you know, uh, where the rubber meets the road and actually go out and see what the, the people want and what is good and what is not good and, and the environment. Uh, because uh, comedy, as you know, is, is, a, is a true science because if you don't have your room right, if, if it's, you know, it even goes down to the temperature. And, and uh, luckily I have friends in the comedy business that are also behind the scenes um, like uh, drop a name, El Canal, who, you know, I, I sat and watched what he has done throughout the years uh, and, you know, learned from from the master. Uh, 
And, oh, yeah. yeah. You've got a big picture, not to interrupt you, but I you've do. got a big picture of him in there. How does he feel about that? <laughs> Is he oh, he loves it. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. When, uh, when he came out and uh, I didn't tell him, uh, I knew he would show up at the club some night. And so when he did, I'm like, hey, come here. I've got to show you something. And did the most funniest part of it is the picture I use uh, to give to the artist to paint his shirt that he had on in the picture was the same shirt he wore to the club. That was just so odd, um, but but hilarious and uh, fate. Uh, so you know we made fun of him for that. But uh, yeah, you know, you know, and you talk about uh, like me meeting you in the parking lot, and you know, a lot of uh, people wouldn't walk up to a stranger in a parking lot, and uh, I just felt the need um, to recognize talent when I see it. And I was, you know, I thought you were great. You know, it's Aww. like, well, and Jimmy too, and Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy just cracks me up. Um, he does. With uh, he's funny. He just did <laughs> you know, a couple weeks ago when we were online, and he did the whole buffering thing. Uh, uh, was yeah. classic. I, yes. I love that. Um, sorry, I went off on a little tangent. Oh, well, that's the, all right. Off, yeah. Well, I mean, just to give side. everybody a background on that, Michael, you're doing a virtual open mic, which is, uh, you know, kind of transferring everything over to, you know, virtual world since we're not physically there. And what, you know, a lot of times virtually we, we had, you know, a hiccup with our, our, you know, practice episode for this. And it's, uh, it's interesting how, with the virtual world, you know, we're doing all these Zoom calls and things and things keep getting buffered. So Jimmy kind of threw that into his set that it was almost kind of believable to some of the audience members that were in that Zoom chat room. They were like, stop talking, I can't hear what he's saying. <laughs> and in reality, it was just getting around. But that that's what, if those for those of you who weren't there, that's what Michael's talking about. But we're talking about, you know, talking to people in parking lots, getting to know people, and now you've got a business. How do you, how do you feel about this venture, Michael? <laughs> Even I'm in excited. These crazy and, times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With especially what's going on, but this this shall pass. But it, you know, the point I guess I would want to get across, and the underlining tones of why I did this is for you guys, the comedians, a hundred percent for you guys. Um, sure, my byproduct is I, I might be able to feed my family one day um, off of <laughs> the comics that come through. But, uh, you know, I, I saw a need for you guys to have a place to grow. And, and you know, I know Funny Bone gets a lot of breaks to a lot of people and um, uh, somewhat helium. I've heard all kinds of stories. And uh, they're both great venues. And then there's a bunch of venues all around St. Louis, you know, smaller ones. But I'm, I'm the guy who wants to be – I'm the owner. I'm there all the time. And I actually – want to invest in you guys to get wherever you want to go. So if it's, let's say you've never, if someone's watching this and they've never been on stage and it's like a dream, I just really it'd be fun to do stand up comedy. I want you to come out and try it, you know, and it, it, it doesn't matter if you bomb, you know, it's, there's no failure. The only time you really truly fail is if you don't do it at all. Um, and then, and then for the comics that have been coming over and over and over to get them to the next one, to get them to work on a weekend, to host, and then to, you know, feature and, um, and then for myself to have the opportunity to say, Hey, let me, let me try to get you a little bit more regional work. Um, uh, there's some things when we come back that I'm working on now that in the future, it's going to be better for you guys um, to try to get you more work. I want to kind of start to build a network of other comedy uh, clubs, um, you know, outside of St. Louis area that say, hey, you know, I got a person be great for feature act and, you know, somewhere you could drive within, you know, a couple hours and go and do and come back. Well, I think that's uh, so great that too, like building community like that, Michael. And that's something you are, uh, what I'll say about you is that you are really good at building community and you have been bringing to, you know, bringing an audience, which is great. Like every time I go to back door, there's always an audience there. <laughs> Even when I had that crazy birthday party, where there was like that lady that was shaking the cake, but I was like, you know what? She brought like, <laughs> she brought like 15 people. So good for her. 
what I'll ask you too is what has been one of like, if, you know, for people who are looking into like opening up a business or starting like an entrepreneurship adventure like yours, what is a piece of advice that you could possibly give them that you've learned or maybe Al Canal told you? What is something in your uh, wide resume of experience that you think that we should all know? To just starting a business? Yeah, that is, yeah, exactly. The key to start to do a business, any business, is to have the passion for what mm -hmm. you really want to do. So, um, and here's what I've seen people do so much that they start a business and they they know one part of the, the business and then they try to go, oh, I can do it all. And that's where they fail. I failed personally uh, with my first business that way because I was like, oh, I can do it. I can do accounting. I, I know nothing of accounting. Uh, you know, I'm very, very good at math, but I don't like all the numbers and the paperwork and the, you know, the filing stuff. Um, so if you're going to do uh, um, a business, one, work with someone like myself uh, you know that's a business coach or find a mentor that is in that industry that you want to do and um, if you can work for them for free say hey i want to you know i want to i just want to work for you got and, and really get a good feel because this is something i think i want to do and you know the younger you are uh the, the easier it is because you know you you don't have as many responsibilities. You don't have a house payment and, you know, a couple car payments and everything. Um, <laughs> so, you know, never, never think you're too young to do something because uh, that's a, that's a falsehood and something that you know, most of our, our subconscious says, Oh, you're, you don't know enough. Well, you don't have to know anything about anything to start a business. You just have to have a passion, and the desire to want it so bad and uh, to do a truly great business the downfall is you're gonna have to give up something right and that goes for pretty much anything you do in life if you want to succeed in it you're gonna have you can't have it all right now so you're gonna have to give up you know some you know if you're really young hey you know I just can't go out tonight because I got to work on this. Um, uh, Cause I, I seen so many people in their twenties and early thirties, like, Oh, I want to be this, you know, uh, successful business person, but they're out drinking every night and they're out socializing. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and so you gotta, you gotta give up one thing uh, for a passion for another. Uh, and that is a true across the board with any business. So, you know, it, there's sacrifice in it. And if you're able to do that now, um, if I would have, if I had the chance to speak to the young Michael, uh, I would, I would be in a so much different place right now and, and, and probably more financially wealthy. And, Isn't and that's everything the thing. equal in hindsight 2020 though, Michael? Oh, it is, it <laughs> is. And that's the, that's the whole thing about being like a business coach. People are like, oh, I know how to do that. And I'm like, okay, great, go do it. You know, and then <laughs> they, they always come back and they ask questions. And it's like, well, you know, we could have skipped, you know, we could have, you could have not went through down that path, but you said you knew what you're doing. And, and, and that's the one thing. And I've learned to, it, uh, years ago, it used to really make me mad. And I took it personally. But now it's like, hey, it's your life. You do what yeah. you want. It's like, and that's where it's going to come down with like working with you, the comedians. And I don't, I'm not here to tell you how to write a joke or tell a joke because I can't do that. That's not my expertise. My expertise is more on the back end of, you know, let's, let's talk about how we can make you extra money and how you can market yourself better. Um, and have, you know, almost teach you self confidence. Uh, and, and how to direct yourself to go after those a little bit bigger jobs, maybe before you're ready. Because if you're ready, it's too late. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> yeah, I see. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 I, 
I, I love that you're talking about the self-sacrifice though, because I think there is, there is always that kind of, um, like I'll say like kind of that headbutting of having it all. And I, I remember even when I first started this podcast and like, you know, Chris Denman, who runs the studio, he knows I, I started off just on my phone and then I eventually like bought a microphone and just like plugged it into my computer. And, you know, it's great because you have people who are friendly with you that want to take a chance and help you out and do all these things. And that's fantastic. And I, I look back on my old audio and I'm like, wow, like I have really good people in my life that were willing to sit in a sketchy basement <laughs> with some foam on the walls. And they were like, hey, you know what, let's, let's make something happen. And you know, I have this one great sponsor that, you know, luckily I knew him through work and he and his wife, they do bath bombs and help me out. But um, what I will say is one of the criticisms I got not, and this is going to what you're saying is that people were like, we never see you anymore. Like, where are you? Like, what are you doing? And it, comedy just became my life because I worked full time and then I would go to the comedy club every night. And so you sacrifice those like happy hours and those drinks because like you're trying to work in your notebook and make things happen and uh, you know what i've kind of learned if people aren't going to respect your dreams and kind of like you were talking about michael like opening up these doors to opportunity those probably shouldn't be the people that are in your life and i i know you know i know you know that but if anybody's at home quarantine kind of questioning <laughs> their life choices or friendships and stuff like I have a great core group of girlfriends who have like stuck with me from the beginning through all of my my theater things. And even in my 20s, I was so confused about like where things were going and doing plays and stuff. And I was like, man, like, is this all like going to pay off in the end? Like, is it worth it? Um, and I'm finding out that it is. It's just it takes a lot of work and a lot of time. And you just have to be willing to know that these sacrifices, even though you're maybe feeling like you're losing or we call it FOMO, fear of missing out, it does pay off, you know, in the end, which is what I'll ask you. What has been one of your uh, your greatest achievements working with Backdoor Comedy that you've enjoyed, whether it was in the club? I know we're on a virtual setup right now. Uh, maybe something's happening through that. What is it something that's meant to you? the with backdoor comedy and events that you'd like to share with us it it has been so much better than i thought it was going to be when it came to uh, actually you guys the comedians um the first few weeks i was open and had open mics um i felt so uh, not a part of the game, you know, and like, you know, you guys, you, know, you didn't know me, you're like, eh, let's, you know, you put your toe in the water, you by coming out, it's like, let's check out this room. And it took a while, you know, and then, and then it was, it went from one extreme, all the way to the other side of <laughs> people talking to me, asking me questions. Um, you know, I had almost from the beginning, uh, uh, Johnny Cavanaugh started coming, who is a wonderful comedian and, you know, has a lot of street credit. Um, so, uh, and having him to be a uh, resource for you guys to talk to as comics. And I, I kind of want to build on that, but you know, that, and then we went to this virtual, you know, and I had to pivot so quickly um and and so many comics were like oh i don't want to do online i'm like no you know you gotta just try it. you gotta try it i have a vision and i keep perfecting my vision each week and it gets better and better um and just to let you know uh not this thursday but a week so that would be the 16th um stephen briggs is going to be on oh i love steve well obviously i love stephen but that's so yeah, awesome but, uh, so i'll make sure I'll I'll have you, and then if Jimmy's available on, because right now instead of doing an open mic, uh, this week's going to be a first week of a little bit different. But um, to go back to you know your question, it's just mm -hmm. the people. Uh, I've been so impressed by you guys, and majority of you are so open um, to want to learn more and. And those are the people I will gravitate to because, uh, you know, the, the, the people, the comics that come in there that act like, you know, 
they're running with their ego instead of running with their heart. Uh, uh, they can just keep on running because I'm not going <laughs> to. I'll let them come in and come out. And they, there's a few of them have asked me multiple times, can I work a weekend? And I'm like, I don't know. Ooh, that's not how it works either. I here's the thing for me, and we, you know, we had. I don't know if you've got the uh, the chance to meet Max Price. He's a good friend of mine. I love. Him oh, absolutely. Yeah. I really oh, like him. Oh, he's fan. Oh, who who doesn't? Max casually subscribed. No, he's great. He's been a great supporter of me, and I love him to death. And we kind of talked about this a little bit last episode, but you know. Uh, it, it you really see like really good comedians are never comedians that are like, wow, look at me, I'm awesome. You know, like there's all these great memes too, where, you know, there's, you know, I was like looking at this and it's a guy that's like putting his leg up the stairs. You've probably seen it. And it's just like open micers and I skip over all of the steps about like perfecting their craft, becoming a feature, becoming a headliner. And it's like, wanting to be famous social media you know like it it's just like what you said like you can tell that people who have really perfected their craft for over like six or seven years like max like they truly love what they did and max was saying how he had to work so hard with even his best of stl showcase and he was like first people really weren't showing up and i wasn't sure what was going to happen but then he learned how to market and he talked to certain people and then now like his showcase i've been to and that's how we met i was like oh my god look at all these people that showed up congratulations and he always laughs because he's like molly you're so happy and i'm like i just like love seeing people succeed especially when they put so much work into it um, and you know, it, it's just a trust factor too. Like you're, you're just saying like, you're meeting these different people and you're like, maybe I wasn't part of the gang and stuff, but you know, as long as people are open and get to know certain people and you see the love and drive, I think that's, what's really nice about the St. Louis comedy community is that like, at least we know when you're trying and you're not just going up there saying like a story or something like that. And then you're like, all right, I was fantastic. <laughs> But you're a little bit more appreciated and understood. Uh, what I'll ask you is, you know, Michael, for those comedians or people who are aspiring to be comedians, what's some advice that you could give to them as they're trying to pursue their craft, even in times like these as well? Times like these, uh, especially uh, because the, the, the comic has to tell a joke. It doesn't matter to who. <laughs> and this is something that... Uh, Dale Jones, who was recently at the club and as a friend, and uh, he just was interviewed, and I was watching the interview, and, and the, the, the person asked him similar to the question he just asked me, and he's, his answer is one that I would uh, also repeat. Um, you just got to get up and do it, and then do it, you know, 100,000 times. You know, you got to get, and this goes across for any business you do, you got to get your 10,000 hours in, you know, you, you know, you, you know, I'm sure you've heard that throughout, you know, business life and our life yeah. in general, but you know, to be an expert in anything, you've got to do it for 10,000 hours. And that's true. And, and to do comic, uh, you know, and, and I, I kind of alluded to it in the very beginning about if you just want to, you know, just terrified to get up on stage and like, well, I don't, I, I think I'm funny, but I'm not really sure. It's like, you know, I, I don't know how many times I've told people that, you know, at the club, they're like, oh, I, you know, they come to open mic all the time and just sit in the audience, which is great. But, you know, they want to try it. And I'm like, just get up there and tell one joke. And, I'll, you know, if that's all you got and you just want to, you know, break it, you know, break in that one thing. And then say, "Hey, that's my time," and you know, <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's the MC know that's you know they're they're time to get off. Um, and so uh, I'm I'm hoping that more and more people will just get up and do that. And I'll always save a spot for someone who walks into the, my club and goes, "This is my first time. I didn't know about sign up. I, I just want to get up there and try it." I'll, I'll like, "We'll get you in." You know, yeah, but, uh, absolutely. It's, yeah. it's like even you know, like I 
that's the other thing too for anybody like i'm a newer comic i've only been doing comedy for about three years now and what i'll tell somebody as long as you're just like respectful and nice and i feel you probably feel the same way most of the time like if it's your first time people be understanding what i really don't like is when it's somebody's first time and they purposely run over the light they're not nice to the host. We've seen those open micers before. And then they wonder why everybody's upset with them. But I always love seeing like new people go up and it's always easy to relate to people like that. Cause I'm like, oh, I remember I was so nervous too. <laughs> I understand. So if anybody's like, oh my gosh, like I'm not as good as so-and-so like that's okay. Cause we, we don't expect you to be, that's the thing. Like I talked to this girl one time and she was so funny. She was like, I just, I'm not good as like this. And she like named off some headliner. I said, well, he's been doing it for 20 years. So I, uh, if he, he better be good at this point. But uh, I think that's great. I think what we can get out of this is like if you, especially once this is all over, at least for me, being quarantined has made me think about like not taking advantage of life opportunities ever again, like being nervous or putting up with bullshit. I'm like, after this, I'm going to try all the material I want, do everything that I want to do. I'm not going to take like any like shit out of it. And if I if something doesn't hit right, I'm not going to take it personally. I'm going to try to grow from it, which is hard because who who likes oh. to bomb? Like, yeah, no one's like, yes, like, that's awesome. It's just, but you know, you just kind of have to learn from it and grow from it. And then what's always kind of interesting is bombing keeps you humble. So that way, when you have a good set, you're like, finally, yes, it worked. I liked it. And like, uh, I don't know, I feel like that's just going to be my life after this. But what I'll say too is, what do you hope for? I know you've had some independent showcases with uh, Yale Hollander, who's been on this podcast. Uh, you've been doing different open mics. You've had people use the venue for their own endeavors. What do you hope for the club once this all kind of clears up? How are we going to rebuild the pieces, Michael, after all of our virtual open mics? <laughs> oh, you know, there's two thoughts on. Um after this, after we can reopen, either people are gonna just need entertainment and they're not gonna care and they're just gonna come out in droves or they're still gonna be kind of gun shy. And, you know, it's like, oh, do we wanna be in a room with other people? And, uh, you know, so I'm I'm not really sure how, you know, I, I have no expectations. You know, the greatest thing, the way not to get dis disappointed, don't have an expectation, just go and do it. And that's, my, you know, whenever they say, oh, open up, I'm going to open up and I'm going to say, hey, the doors are open, come on in um, and hope for the best. You know, that's all we can really do. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say. That. Yeah, I think that's great. Just use a little Lysol like thing as a table setting. <laughs> Just be like, want to wipe down after this? That's fine. Uh, who do you think? Who would you like to have open when everything opens up? Like, who do you who do you want the headliner to be? <laughs> who should we look forward to, Michael? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a th that's a a great question. Where you know, depending on where where we're at, I still have comedians scheduled. Uh, for, you know, like uh, into May on. Um, and what I'm doing is as it gets closer and they're like, eh, I'm just canceling them out. Um, so, you know, because uh, just through the, the community across the United States, people are starting to book, rebook, you know, and I, I don't know, I'm afraid we're going to be locked down until August or so, but um, I'm really hoping not. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be, you know, for money wise, it's going to be kind of rough. You know, yeah, we all can survive for a month or so, but, you know, and it gets way out there. And that's, it, it's kind of funny. Uh, uh, one of my friends who owns a restaurant, she was, did a Facebook post yesterday and she was kind of doing a small rant about, well, people keep coming up to me and say, well, the government's got all these SBA loans, so you're going to be fine. And she's like, Aww. well, first you have to fill out the paperwork, which, yeah, we did the paperwork. I did the paperwork, too. But there's no guarantee they're going to come up with any money. You know, uh, uh, there, there probably will be some, but it's not going to. And this money is meant to pay employees, rent, utilities, 
you know, so it's, it's hit not, very hard. Yeah. Yeah. I feel yeah. It's not, it's not going to be money. That's going to be putting food on my table. And that's why yeah. I got to keep doing these virtuals that say, Hey, you know, either I'm charging for it or I'm not like this week, I'm not going to charge. It's going to mm -hmm. be, you know, donations. Um, but I also have like Patrick Passifu, who is a really good comedian. He's been in, uh, the club, um, he was back in December. He came through, uh, him and Mike Baldwin. Uh, they were very, very funny. And, uh, Patrick was actually the feature act and I thought he was absolutely hilarious. So that's like, uh, like, Hey, you want to do that? And that's why I've been reaching out to these, these guys that I've met and say, Hey, I'm doing this show. Would you be interested? And so like, uh, I have, uh, you know, Steven that, um, uh, what was here with you and, and Seth. Yeah. Um, so um, I don't know who's going to be whenever that day comes up. I don't think it's going to matter who I have. I could put, <laughs> I could put Molly uh, Ambergy as headliner and they're probably packed the house. Oh, you know, maybe with my red hair, they'll be like, who is this person? So I love I'm your like, red hair. whole new me. <laughs> I, you know, it's I've been wanting to do it for a while. Hair. It's a whole new me. I, I like I, that's what I told you is that I feel like Ariel now. I'm like, I just want to be part of this world. So, <laughs> so I, uh, I want to be out again. What I what I will say and I will give credit to you is that, you know, with these work, people are having, you know, mixed feelings about, you know, virtual shows and stuff like and it's it's definitely crazy about the live stream culture that's happening now. You know, like everybody's like, guess what? I'm doing a show in my basement. So just tune in at like nine something or, hey, my wife and I are drunk in quarantine. Come look at me. Or suddenly there's like a girl and she's like, listen, um, I'm going to make a crock pot recipe. And she starts streaming like she's Gordon Ramsay. You know, like it's just it, it's a very weird it's a very weird time but what i will give to you i know the first time around it was a little rough because it was uh, at, like anything the first time i mean even with recording this i was like chris how are we gonna do this and he's like yeah here's a password here's this and then max got thrown off and then i got thrown off and then we couldn't hear each other and i was echoey because of the the ceilings and stuff and it uh it always it always kind of takes a, a growing process in anything and it was hilarious because you had like 70 people and like one zoom call and like there was one guy that was like get me a drink diana or something yeah <laughs> and then like angela smith like somebody started like screen flipping or something and she's like i never thought i'd be heckled this way but here we are you know we're all laughing and then the second time around, you know, you grew from that and Will O'Donnell, who's fantastic, was the host and he sent us a whole like, I was like, you know, Will O'Donnell's been in the military when he sends you like, here's all the bullet points of the different things you should do for a mic. So I said, you know, when Will O'Donnell tells me that uh, I should not have a cluttered background, you bet I did that. And I put hashtag at ease and texted him. But uh, what I what I will say is like, you've been growing each time and you had Matt Holt, who was fantastic. Uh, did you how was the how was the audience feedback from watching something virtually like that? Did you get any uh, interesting comments? Good, bad? Uh, what did you felt like you learned the second time around with all these people? <laughs> the, the second time I learned that uh, um, definitely having someone like Matt Holt on uh, was uh, great um, because for twofold one he, uh, everybody that was on with Matt enjoyed just talking Matt is a great conversationalist he and is. he's one of the nicest guys uh, um, if you uh, anyone out there uh, look up Matt Holt and follow him he does a nightly uh, in the Matt cave um, and then uh, he does some other things like last Saturday night, he played a drinking game with some of his comic buddies, uh, took yeah. a beer shot every minute for an hour. That was hilarious. Uh, uh, I think that's something we all should probably get together and do. Uh, <laughs> you know, but then the, 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 might as well. Yeah, <laughs> the, uh, the, the comments uh, from the customers were the uh, audience, they liked it better you know, some really kind of wish that they were on that Zoom 
but they were not the problems that we had, you know, not the people that we had problems with the first time around. I kind of like that format of having it. And that's why this week I'm tweaking it where instead of everybody doing a set, it's going to be the Brady Bunch. We're going to have nine of us on there and we're just going to kind of talk comedy. And if someone wants to break into a little routine, it's going to be kind of, I I don't want to call it an improv thing, but it's going to be just comedy banter. And then, um, and then we're going to finish it with Patrick doing, you know, 10, 15 minutes, whatever he wants to do. Um, It's kind of because it's not going to be a flowing thing. And I want to see how that works because the one comment I had uh, from several people, their favorite part was the, on the first show where most of the people went away and there was just a group of uh, comics still on there and a few audience members and just listening to you guys banter back and forth because you guys have a different world than most of the audience, right? You know, it's, it's, a lot of the audience just like love that creative uh, togetherness that you guys have. So I'm hoping with the, the people that I'm picking will have a great banter along with Patrick and it will be uh, more of a kind of a comedy variety show of just, um, I don't know, I, I can't even put my finger on it. and. Uh, I have this whole, you know, and that's, again, it's one of those visions I have, and I know it will work because it's something um, uh, I've really went out and watched a lot of people, and I'm like, I like this, I don't like this, and I I take myself as a pretty good judge of what works and what doesn't work, and so um, I think this is going to work, and then we're going to continue it on and, and, and see where that goes, and it could change next week. You know, you never know. That's the cool thing about <laughs> this online stuff. Uh, it, it's just, uh, it is what it is. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. You know, especially like I understand with the podcast because, you know, I just had, what well, we'd had Max on, a good friend of mine from high school who I haven't talked to in the longest time just because we're in different cities. She's like, hey, really enjoyed the banter. And it's so funny you bring that up because that's been, I used Lori as an example, but that's kind of been even when we were just audio what people would review back they just like enjoy listening to a conversation because you know we have to remember too that most people you know and i was a theater major we talked about this a lot too is most people aren't used to the comedy world or the theater world or the artistic world so watching just like uh different people be interviewed or like uh, David Spade lights out. That's something I'm watching. Oh, I love that yeah. show. Love it. Right. Nikki Glazer was just on it. Like I was like, Oh, I love, and I love her. She's fantastic. But St. Louis home, but it's, it's interesting to see comedians kind of come out conversationally on the shot like that. And you're, it's hilarious how, you know, even though David Spade, he's got like writers and stuff, you can tell when certain things he says are just some of his own, just like quirks and whatnot. And it's, it's fantastic. Like he's, I, you know, watching him from Tommy boy all the way here to now. And for us who are in the comedy world, like we're so used to it. We understand it really well. But for people, even my parents who are starting, you know, through me got more into theater and comedy. Now my mom will call me during quarantine. She's like, oh, I watched that Nikki girl and I just loved her style, you know, but like, and it's, it's hilarious (laughs) because it's my mom, but you know, like, I'm like, oh my God, you have to remember like my mom and all the neighborhood ladies like probably aren't used to it. And then they see this comedy special on Netflix called Bangin' and they're like, all right, she's cute. We're going to turn her on. She could be our daughter, but let's, let's see what's going to happen. And then they, they fall in love with like a certain support system. And now my mom like wants to know about all the comedians, all the people and all of her neighborhood ladies are like, oh, we just watched Rachel Feinstein. We just watched Amy Schumer. Uh, So I think that's great that we have so many people in the comedy and I I have people in the theater world who are doing uh, live readings over on Zoom. 
and getting donations to the Shakespeare Festival and whatnot. And it's getting people who normally don't have the access or maybe the affordability to do so, see these things, see things virtually on the internet. And it's not a class system anymore. It's not, you know, I'm afraid to be rejected and go see something, or I don't wanna go by myself. You have the comfort of sitting in your living room, looking at these comics, seeing Johnny Kavanaugh. That was so funny. I think I told you this, he, when he used that VCR tape, you know, he couldn't do that in the live club. But he was like, you know what? I'm not even going to do a regular set. I'm just going to put this VCR tape I found of myself. And it gives people a laugh because they realize how like he's been working on this craft the whole time, you know? So I feel like these virtual things have to keep happening, whether you agree with it or not, because it's reaching out to people, at least in my opinion, who have been too nervous or like don't feel they're going to fit in to see something artistic. So I, I really respect you for trying out different, I mean, I'm doing it with the podcast too, Michael. Like <laughs> I'm figuring out things, I'm texting Chris every five minutes being like, here's this, here's what I'm thinking, but it changes every week and you just have to keep learning and, and growing and doing something. But what I will say non-philosophically, we are casually quarantined. Some of us are essential workers. Some of us are not. Michael, what have you been doing other than comedy open mics and shows <laughs> to pass the time during this quarantine session that you think maybe some of us can do to help us get through this crazy time? Uh, since quarantine, uh, I honestly worked full time um, and probably harder than I have uh, at the club, uh, getting this virtual thing stuff going and trying to, you know, there's a lot of work behind the scenes, as you know, um, and just try to uh, uh, market it well. Um, well, you know, I've been doing a lot of stuff around the house, you know, it's like today I got up early and went to Home Depot and we had a toilet seat broke and, and one toilet was <laughs> kept running. So I had to buy the guts and redid that, and, <laughs> you know, a bunch of stuff and uh, constantly doing dishes. You know, there's four All of the us time. in this house. There's four of us in the house. And that's one thing that, you know, when I had the club, I'd eat one or two meals at the tap house. And, uh, the, you know, uh, with the kids activities and everything, everybody was gone most of the time. So we didn't have family dinner except for maybe once or twice a week. And now we pretty much have family dinner every night and lunch. And uh, so it's, uh, there's always something to do in a house. Um, and, and so that's, uh, I've been like, keeping busy with, with that. Uh, and also trying to plan for the future. Uh, I've been doing, you know, that's the one thing. It's like, just because you're in quarantine doesn't mean you're dead and you should stop doing what you're, what you want to do. It's great to be able to say, you know, like after this, I'm probably going to take a nap, you know, <laughs> and, and to be able to do that and then be a little refreshed and um, but be able to think uh, the next step of, you know, where I want to go. And, and I kind of talked to you about, you know, uh, earlier, but when after the club opens, I want to do some more special things for you guys. Um, is uh, I've been meeting new club owners because, you know, before they were busy, now they're not busy. So I can reach out and talk to them and say, hey, let's kind of work together. Uh, and, and so it's things like that. It's the things that, you know, um, the behind the scenes that in a comedy club you would never see, but those are the things I get to do and get to do very well thought out. So instead of having to rush and make a phone call, uh, you know, could you only have 10 minutes and trying to coordinate stuff? Uh, that's the, the cool thing about right now. Everything is, we're back to the fifties, you know, it's like, take your time. It's all good. You know, have a drink. Uh, I have drank more in the last <laughs> two weeks than I have in months. Yeah. Uh, and, I feel you. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is probably not a great thing, but it's like, why not? I'm not driving. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. I'm like, you know, we, I was so, you know, I work at a hotel being an essential sure. worker and I, I worked for like 
10 days straight. And then I've been off for the last five and Jimmy has been making dinner and we had like all this alcohol. We had whiskey, we had some, Jimmy bought this rosé wine from Aldi's and he was like, babe, I think you might like this. And I did because it's all gone. <laughs> but you know, like, it, it's so funny to me how it's, you're totally right. I feel like all we're doing is dishes. I'm looking at meals. I'm trying to do stuff. So like my big artistic ventures are like this podcast and my friends redoing a logo for me. Like it's, you know, you try to do stuff, but I think what I'm taking out of this at least is I hope when I go back into my quote unquote regular normal is that I still keep in touch with people the way I am now. Like I, I've been really doing better about calling my parents and talking to people I haven't spoken to in a while and, you know, talking to my cousins and my sisters who I don't get to see as much because I live in a different city. But I think that's one thing I hope to take out of this is, you know, still to take that quality time because it's so easy, you know, like going through different things and having your schedule. And like, even through this, there's times where somebody's like, let's zoom, let's FaceTime, let's do something. And I'm still trying to get work and get done. But hopefully, maybe I can take this life balance <laughs> a little bit better once I'm once I'm done with yeah. all of this. And, uh, mm -hmm. Sadly, you know, and, and that's I, I hope people do that. Because, um, you know, I'm also a certified life coach. And that's one of the first things I always tell people it's like you got to take care of yourself and self care, um, and slow you know slow your roll down because yeah I'm much slower when before this happened my life was much simpler than it used to be I used to be kind of like always going and but I wasn't I was always busy but I was not productive yeah you know because that's a I had a client once that. She was just going on and on and on about her calendar that, that was on her refrigerator and it had all this stuff that she's doing and she's so busy and and i'm like and i go take a picture of that and send it to me she was like why i go because i can guarantee you you're not productive you're just doing busy work mm -hmm. and she's like got really mad and then Go, yeah, you're right, because I have on there, I got to babysit my grandchild, you know, all the way through their, you know, her schedule. And not that that's not essential, but we we often say we're, you know, we are busy, but we're not being productive. And this is a good time for us all to slow down and figure out kind of, you know, you alluded to it, what's important in life. Because what's important in life isn't, you know, sometimes doing this busy work you think is going to be productive, that it's never going to do anything. That is only an excuse to get to where your goal is. So if you're very uh, focused on where your goal is, um, uh, then you're going to start building your routines to go after that goal instead of just doing busy work. But uh, I do believe that if we truly embrace what we're doing now, and the, the aspect is, and that's part of self-care is checking in with your parents and, and calling that bestie that you haven't talked to in a couple of years and um, reconnecting because that is what where our heart is truly is. And we, we sometimes block our heart out uh, uh, for to um, give our ego a bigger boost. And, we don't need to live through our ego. We need to live through our heart. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to like, you know what, Michael, you should write a book. I don't know if you've done that yet, but just do that. Don't live through your ego, live through your heart. You know, I, I, I absolutely love that. That is, that is exactly how I feel all the time. And then one last question I'll ask you before we go. Um, have you had a favorite book or a favorite movie or show that you've been watching or reading during quarantine that you want to share? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the uh, one of my favorite books that I think everybody should read is the the uh, Secret Life of a Millionaire Mind. It's uh, by uh, oh god, and it's T. Eckert, and his name went out of my head. But but yeah, the, the Secret Life of a Man Millionaire Mind, and I've read it a couple times. But it basically talks about having a broke mindset versus a wealth mindset. And it's amazing the words that come out of our mouths that 
if you listen to him, it's like, oh my gosh, you're thinking, you know, like a broke person. And if you're going to do that, you're always going to have be broke. And a lot of times broke has nothing to do uh, with money. You know, same with wealth. Uh, you know, wealth actually does, but you know, the, the mindset of, uh, and it goes back to doing the right things and for the right reasons. But on the flip side of things that uh, watching that I absolutely loved and it just came out and most of us binge watched it and no, it was not T Tiger King. I haven't watched <laughs> it and, and refused to watch it because that it looks like the most stupidest thing in the world. Um, it is. But is the Ozarks. Oh, yeah. I haven't watched the third season yet, but I love that show. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. third Trust season me, I is great. Je uh, Justin Bateman uh, is one of, I've always liked him. You know, I grew up with him. You know, he's been, you know, from a child actor all the way up. Uh, uh, he's always been a great, I don't know. He's, very, oh, he's very fantastic in that show. Great. It's yeah. like what I love about that show is the casting is phenomenal. Like everybody plays their character that you just believe that it's that person. I always forget it's Jason Bateman. It's Laura Linney is the other one. Is that, am I, am I making this up? That's Wendy. Laura Linney. Yeah. She's, oh my God, such a bitch. But <laughs> like she's crazy. And I, I love, I love it to death. And I, it, it's just such a well done show. So I can't wait for the third season to come. I mean, I, I still have to watch it. We've been watching a lot of stuff. We watched, um, what I'll recommend if you haven't seen it yet is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. It's a uh, Quentin Tarantino directed it, and it kind of has like the uh, the Charles Manson take on some things, and it shows old Hollywood and the westerns. And you know, I sometimes I get a little weary when there's a lot of hype around the movie because I'm like, is it going to be good, or is it yeah. just because everybody's wealthy and has friends in the business? But Leonardo DiCaprio did a fantastic job. Brad Pitt like completely blew me away. And uh, the ending, if, if you're into violence, this is definitely something for you. <laughs> but it's actually not as violent until the very end that me personally, I had to walk out the room for a minute, but Jimmy watched the whole thing and just narrated it through me, you know, to the wall. <laughs> so. But if you haven't watched it yet, do watch it. It's 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 worth it for sure. The acting is superb. Quentin Tarantino did a fantastic job, and it's it's a lot of fun. But yeah, everybody's been watching The Tiger King, so I've seen it. Every you know, you watch that and you go, maybe social distancing isn't a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> did you talking that. about um, oh the show that uh, David Spade showed? Um, he did you see the interview that he did with uh, um, the director of Tiger King? No, how did that oh. go? <laughs> it, you should watch it. You okay. will definitely. Uh, uh, he talks about um, there was so much. If if everything actually was put on film, you know, or that that was filmed that didn't make the you know final cut, he said it. it the director he uh he had to go after the show uh six months uh with uh treatment and he's actually you know had a psychologist or psychiatrist and actually went into kind of like a um you know rest home for a week because it yeah. was so dark and demented um so that's like when after i watched that i watched that the other day i'm like i'm definitely not going to watch this because it just gives it gives, uh, you know, the guy, you know, the whatever, the tiger, whatever his name is, um, <laughs> Nutball, um, you know, who's sitting in a jail cell right now, you know, uh, validation that, hey, Michael Tobin watched my show. Uh, well, it's, it's definitely just, nuts, for sure. You're, if, you, yeah. if you ever do watch it someday, it's, it's just crazy. What I'll say, and then we'll find out where we can find you and support your club. What I will just say about it is if you are sensitive to kind of like animal stuff like that, because I am too, um, probably don't watch it. Uh, for me, I thought that speaking of director, because he directed the Fire Festival documentary on Netflix. I don't know if you had a chance to watch that either. Uh, very similar kind of like layout of everything. I just can't believe how many people own 
in captivity in the United States, tigers. Like there are people that own more tigers in the US than the ones that are actually out in the wild in Africa. That's wild. And isn't that crazy? I'm like, no, I mean, and I think tigers are beautiful. I mean, I'm from Cincinnati. Sure. We have the Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> like, I, 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 I just don't ever want to own one. Like, I think they either belong in their own habitat or a zoo. And then, like these, you know, it highlights that there are these crazy people. Which I'm sure why they did it to begin with was here's these crazy people who are like, I just love wild animals, and I'm like, me too. But you know, there's no reason why you need to be owning a three inch tooth animal, like. Just own a dog like everybody else. <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. But um, that there's my rant on that. Well, Michael, thank you for joining us. Where can we find you and backdoor comedy events in uh, O'Fallon, Missouri? And how can we support during this time to help support local? Because I know people are going to ask that. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's my website, uh, which I'm sure you put out there, is backdoorcomedyevents.com. Mm -hmm. And if you scroll to the bottom, you can link to Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Uh, I'm really good at Facebook uh, and secondary is Instagram. Twitter, I haven't done much with. Uh, actually, every time I post to Twitter, it goes to my personal account and not to my business account. I got to figure that one out. Um, so, but yeah, like this, this Thursday, um, or I don't know when you're going to get this out, but every Thursday, if you just check on Facebook. You'll see if I'm gonna have um, it through my Facebook page or through a private room. <laughs> One of those places. Sounds good to me. But yeah, I would love any kind of support. And if you haven't liked the, my Facebook page, please do. Um, and then just kind of keep an eye on what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. That's we'll we'll share the page. We'll put a little caption on here uh, for the Casually Molly podcast. Please just remember to casually subscribe. We're on all streaming services. We're on a YouTube page now where you're going to see Michael. Um, and then you can always find me personally, Molly Ambergy, either on Facebook or Instagram. I do better with Instagram than I do Twitter as well. But on occasion, if you want to tweet, that's perfectly fine too. Just, in, I don't know, Instagram has always been easier for me. I have a better handle on that <laughs> than I do on a Twitter account. I think I you just do that Twitter very well. Yeah, everybody's always like, love your Instagram account, love your vibe. And I'm like, oh, but no one ever says that about my Twitter account, so it's okay. Uh, but Michael, have a lovely rest of your day. And uh, I just wish you the best. No, thank you. I'm gonna keep drinking. Everybody keep drinking some coffee, staying healthy, staying safe. And thank you to all of our essential workers, especially our healthcare workers out there, grocery store work, truck drivers. I mean, they're keeping the country standing. Just thank you to everybody that's been uh, helping us stand through these hard times. And Michael, say hello to your family for me and best of luck with everything. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.